I love using StreamerBot. It is one of my favorite tools as a streamer. However, it's not one of the most user-friendly <laughs> tools that's out there, mainly because it has been built from coders who think as coders, and that's okay. But if you're like me and you didn't understand fully coding and you didn't really think that way, it's a little difficult to get started. However, I've gotten really good with using it to a point that I feel comfortable that I can actually show you how to be comfortable using StreamerBot as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay things out a little bit easier and give you kind of examples of how to think of StreamerBot while you're going through it. If anything seems confusing or you want to see some other ideas I'm doing, please leave a comment for me. Let me know what you would need clarified, what needs to be gone more in depth over. I can't make videos that help you unless I know what you need. So first off, installing StreamerBot is simple, very simple. So all you have to do is come down to StreamerBot right there, that download. And once it's downloaded, all you have to do is extract, just choose where you're going to put it, and then just make a new folder, drop it, let it extract. Once it's done extracting, you'll actually come down to that folder that you just opened, and this is installed. All you have to do is hit the streamerbot.exe. Now this is streamerbot. This first tab, the viewers tab that it pops up with, this is basically just an informational panel that's going to tell you the viewers that are currently looking at your channel. This panel, when it populates with viewers, gives you the option to ban people or to look at their channel and check them out. Now to get this set up initially, the first thing you're wanna gonna go to is stream apps. Now this is a panel that you connect to either OBS, Streamlabs, or Polypop if you're using it. We're gonna use OBS because this is my preferred streaming program. Okay, so here I am in my OBS and you can kind of see my picture. Hi. And when you're going to connect this, you're going to need to look for your WebSocket server. Go to your tools and you come down to where it says WebSocket server setting. It's gonna come up with this page, but what you're looking for is this show connect info panel. So what you're gonna see is you're gonna have your server IP, your server port, and your server password. You're gonna wanna copy the, this information to put it in StreamerBot. You're gonna right click in your StreamerBot and hit add. So, you know, use the right click button, add, and then you're gonna put a name. So for me, this, I just usually call it what it is. So this is currently OBS 30 that I'm working on. And you're gonna make sure it's on the WebSocket version 5.x, and this is that way you have the right compatibility. <clears throat> then you're gonna put in your host number, your port number, and your password, which is as simple as hitting copy, paste. Now, one of the important things that you wanna make sure you have enabled is auto connect on startup. This way, when StreamerBot starts up, it automatically connects to your OBS. The next is if it should disconnect, automatically reconnect if it should disconnect. And me, I dropped this down to 10 seconds. Hey, do we have all this set up? Yes, but it's still disconnected. Well, if you right click on it and you come down and hit connect, and now it is connected to my OBS, and now I can control my OBS with StreamerBot. Well, what about uh, adding Twitch or YouTube? Well, you're gonna come over to platforms. And right here, this is going to be blank as everything is going to be. But you'll see you'll have the option for Twitch or YouTube. For this example, we're just going to go ahead and use Twitch. So what you're going to do, come over to the accounts. Now you're going to see that you have the broadcaster account and the bot account. The bot account is literally a second account. Now you can do this currently with Streamlabs uh, and their cloud bot, but this works basically the same way. I actually have where I have my bot called Felix the manager. Are you talking about me, sir? Yes, you. Oh, well, oh, okay, I'll leave. My little sidekick buddy. What I do is I take that second account I've created on Twitch and I actually log it in to the bot account. This way I can actually, if I wanted to have my own customized bot, or in my case, I've actually gave him a personality. He actually is a sidekick that not only talks and talks to the chat, but also comes on screen, I've made him his own character. And it was all possible because of StreamerBot. And anyway, I'm getting off track. Let's go back to it. So in here, all you need to do is go to your login. And of course, it's gonna come up with, hey, you, we need to, you need to provide access on Twitch. And I just go ahead and authorized. And hey, we're logged in successfully. We can close this. 
So now I am logged in with this. Now, when I click like something like channel points, it will populate with all my channel point redemptions I've already had set up. So let's say you still wanted to use Stream Elements, Stream Labs, or something else that you have connected to your account. You have another bot that you still want to use, and that is perfectly fine. You don't have to replace it at all with StreamerBot. In fact, you can use StreamerBot to enhance those things. So what you would look at then is from platforms, go to where it says integrations. Now integrations, you're gonna notice, you can actually hook your Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Voice Mod, Donor Drive, Pulsoid, Hyperate.io, Tippy Stream, Treat Stream, Lumia Stream, StreamerBot's website, the VTubers Studio, Crowd Control, and Elgato. So these integrations are literally just additional ways that you can add functionality to StreamerBot. Now, the greatest thing about this is if you have alerts already set up and you don't want to replace them, you don't have to. You can actually then use Streamlabs or Stream Elements and still have those happen, but then add something extra to happen when somebody follows, when somebody gives you, you know, donates or anything, really. Now, I know you're thinking right now, that's great, but still, I don't know what the hell to do with this. All right, let's get to that, shall we? Okay, so the next part you're gonna wanna come to, this is the meat and potatoes of everything that is StreamerBot here. This is the actions. Okay, so let me kind of give you an idea of how this is gonna break down. The actions box that you see, this is where it is basically like your brain telling you to walk. If your brain's telling you to walk, that is your action, walk. Now, what you're gonna get to make that happen is you have to go to sub actions and sub actions is literally the individual breakdown of things that need to happen in order for you to walk your sub actions would then be added as lift left foot up move left foot forward put left foot down center body weight then lift up your right foot bring it forward in front of the left foot place it down move forward and then loop that action. That's essentially what you're, you're doing is you, your action is the word walk. And then the sub actions is everything that has to make walk happen. So the next box you see is called trigger. Now this is basically the reason why the actions happen. If we take the walking example that I just used, the, the word is walk and we have a bunch of things that tell us how to walk. The trigger is the why are we walking? The trigger is I'm hungry. The action, I walk to get it. And the sub action, is, the sub actions are basically the step by step on how to walk so that way you can accomplish that. Now I know that may not be the most magical or fun kind of way of explaining it, but this is the idea of how you have to think when it comes to streamer bot. All right, well, let's go ahead and build our first action. And let's say we want this to happen anytime somebody follows on the channel. We're going to right click to add the action. So you click add. Now in here, you need to give it a name. So we're just gonna call this follower alert. Now a group is basically a way to make sure that you can stay organized. If you put things into groups, it keeps you kind of knowing where things are going. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume I'm using Streamlabs when I trigger an alert. So I put a group called Streamlabs. The queue system is actually fantastic because you can assign multiple different queues. And what this helps you to do is manage things so that way you can keep things interactive as well as manage everything automatically. So currently right now, we only have the default queue. And you know what, that's fine for now. We'll just run with that. Okay, so we have the action. Hey, the follower alert, great. But it still doesn't know what to do. Well, let's go ahead and go down to our sub actions. Let's start building what we want to have happen. <laughs> and, and a side note, as I was trying to click, right click over here, make sure you actually highlight in the actions what you're trying to work with. So in the sub actions, you just right click. And here is a whole bunch of different things. This can be a little bit scary, but I'm gonna kind of point out the primary ones that you're gonna be working with. So that way you can understand how to develop this. And if you follow along, you're gonna be able to make this happen for your stream too. So this first tab here is core. This is more like programming side of this. The things you're probably gonna wanna focus on initially is delay, 
This is basically how much time passes between the different sub actions. This way, if you have something like a video going off and you only wanted it to last for a few seconds, you can tell it how long. Now, this is all done in milliseconds. So if you're thinking two seconds, you would have to enter in 2000 or 2000 milliseconds. Following along with like with the actions, if you had a different action that's already set up and you wanted it to run within this action, this run action would be what you would want to use. But right now, I'm going to go right to my OBS here and I'm going to go down to my sources and I want to set the source visibility state. Now, as you can see, I have a lot when it comes to my OBS. My list on OBS is a tad ridiculous because I build a lot of stuff in StreamerBot and in OBS and make them work together. If you ever want to see this, pop into my Twitch stream sometime. You'll get an idea of how crazy you can get with StreamerBot. And, and no, you don't have to be crazy with it. I just, I'm a very eccentric dude. I can't help it. So these are all my scenes. And I'm going to go ahead and go into my reaction scene. I'm going to go ahead and put in my Kool-Aid man. Now, this is one I've set up before, but I'll show you how this works in a little bit. So first, we're going to just go ahead and hit OK, because we want this to be visible. We want the Kool-Aid man video to pop up. But all that's going to do right now is just play that video. Now, with my Kool-Aid man, he is a 14 second video. So what I need to do is hit the delay 14,000 milliseconds for 14 seconds, and then I need to turn it back off. An easy way to do this is to select the one that we had it say visible and we just right click duplicate sub action and double click and then we set the state to hidden and there we go. But the problem is there's no way to trigger it. We, 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 we told it, hey, this is what's going to happen and then we know how it's going to happen, but we haven't told it why. Now, I said I wanted to have this happen when my Streamlabs alert went off when I get a follower. Well, in here, there isn't exactly a function for that, but this is how you would make it happen. In the triggers, instead of searching for Streamlabs, you're going to go to Twitch and we're going to go to channel and follow. Anytime somebody would follow on Twitch, not only is Streamlabs alert going off, but your streamer bot is also receiving that same alert and will trigger the same thing. So now we have our trigger, our action, and our sub actions. What happens when we actually make it work? Well, if you want to test things and you go to the triggers, you can actually right click your trigger and hit test triggers. And this is, it will show you what's going to happen. Yeah. What the f But that is as simple as setting up a video inside StreamerBot can be. Honestly, whatever you wanted to put in as a video source and do it this method, this is a very simple way to make it happen. But there you can even add more to this if you wanted to. Let's say we wanted to change the scene of this. We'll switch it to where you would actually see me. And we're going to do it right here. I'll go ahead and change this to be a little shorter. So what's going to happen then is we've got the Kool-Aid man coming through five seconds later. It's going to change to uh, the scene that actually is my normal talking one here. So then I hit the test. Yeah. What the f And it triggered to this scene. So you can actually bring up entirely new scenes without having to click. So if you had a raid coming through and you're in the middle of a game, but you're like, hey, I can pause this game and I can go to my, you know, a screen where it's just me. It can do it automatically. These are the things that can really start separating you from so many others. I started out with something as simple as the Kool-Aid man that we did, where all I did was turn on a video and turn off a video. That's a great place to start. Now, I hope this basic understanding of StreamerBot helps you to get started and to also fuel your curiosity as you go forward. Now, I hope you're subscribed to the channel because what's coming up next is I'm going to show you how I solved the Twitch ad problems with StreamerBot. Yes, I actually have a way to keep viewers engaged through a minute and 30 seconds of ads. All right. So looking forward to seeing you guys down the road for some more fun. Catch you guys on the next one.